gentlemen welcome everybody this is survival preparedness for beginners and on today's video yes we are talking about your stimulus check that you're going to be receiving from the federal government now most analysts and most news agencies say that a lot of people are going to be using their stimulus checks to pay back um, any bills and everything else that they are behind on which only makes sense correct so if you're behind on your rent, your mortgage, your car payment, electric bill, water bill, phone bill, you know, you're gonna to try to take care of those things and everything else first. But if you are a single person, you will be getting a check for $1,400 if you meet the certain criteria. If you are a married couple, you'll be getting $2,800. And let's just say you're a family of five. Well, you just scored the big one, you're getting $5,600. So this is going to help out a lot of people. Finally, right folks? But what is one of the key things that you may want to think about doing with a little bit of your stimulus check money? Now I'm not talking about going out to Walmart and buying that big screen TV. I'm not talking about falling for the good old commercials that are on TV where they'll tell you they're gonna double your refund or your stimulus money, tax refund, stimulus money, anything else to put towards that brand new car that you probably just don't need. See, they all want a piece of this money. They want to give you the money so that you spend it to stimulate the economy. Now, a smart person would sit back and see this, but you really have to sit here and think about what it is that you need and really need and really want and what would be a necessity and what is a luxury. So let's put a little bit into perspective here on maybe a few suggestions on some of the things you may want to do with just a little bit of your stimulus money. Now that's talking about spending the whole thing on what I'm about to talk about. We're talking a small portion of your stimulus money. Now let's just say you're a family of four, you're gonna be getting $5,400 or $5,600, excuse me. So, what are you gonna do with that money? All right, <clears throat> I would suggest, now this is just a suggestion, taking at least $600 of that money. Now, if you are a prepper and you are prepared and you don't need anything, you're all set and you're good to go, well then, this doesn't apply to you. But if you are a new prepper or somebody that is looking to get started in this because you've been burnt so many times over just the last year, depending on where you live, um, you may want to consider some of these items. Now, number one, food. You want to make sure that you do have food for at least two weeks for you and your family. So if you are a very good shopper and you are really good at using coupons compared to the buy one get ones and you go through your flyers, you go on internet and you check out all the sales and everything else that are either going on or coming to a local store near you because a lot of places now will show you the upcoming week. So you can plan ahead you're going to maximize your money and you're going to maximize the amount of food that you are going to be buying which means that will actually give you more money to spend on some other things now let's talk about some of those other things all right <clears throat> and in a given such an emergency situation as in a hurricane or as we saw not just too long ago the catastrophic ice storm that crippled half the nation and people were without water for weeks and I think some of them are still without water no power or anything else what can we do well I would suggest you go on to Amazon and check out they're called water bricks now the reason I'm telling you this is because if you live in a say a small apartment a small dorm room a small uh, condo, 
whatever it may be, a townhouse, something like that, and you don't have a lot of space because water is one of the biggest things, for one, you need, and two, takes up the most room to store for most people. If you buy these water bricks, the really nice thing is, is you can fill them up and they stack just like a brick does. That's why they're called a water brick. So, you kill two birds with one stone, they take up less space, you can secure to make sure that you have enough water for at least two weeks for you and your family. Now, the next thing on the list would be, as we have seen uh, with all the power outages and everything else, possibly making sure that you have some way to generate power. Now, you can do this in several different ways. There's a lot of different things out there that you can buy. It all depends on where you live, what your restrictions are, and what you're allowed to have. Some places don't allow you to have a gas generator. Now, if you do have a home and everything else, you have a gas generator. I have a gas generator. You may want to also check into battery banks. Now, you can get all different types of battery banks, and I would suggest making sure that you do your homework and take a look around. I've done videos on some of these battery banks. You can go back and check some of those out. But you also want to make sure that you have something that's small, that can be solar charged, that you can use mainly just for your phone to make sure that you still can get information in and out and hopefully maybe get a signal or something like that where you can let your loved ones friends, family, and anybody else that you want to know that you're okay, your family's okay, and this is the situation. Or if it's a dire, you know, like a dire need, a dire type situation, you may need to dial 911. If your phone is completely dead, it's not gonna work. So you wanna make sure that you can buy a small little battery bank. You can pick them up on Amazon, anywhere between 25 and 50 bucks. They have the solar built right into them and you can dedicate that just for your cell phones. Now you can also move up a little bit and you can look at any type of a uh, battery bank system. Now most of these you're going to want to have to buy into getting a solar panel to charge that system because if, let's face it, if the power is out, the grid's down and whatever else, it's now you can't just plug it into the wall now, can you? So you have to have an alternative power source to charge that battery bank. Now, the lights and stuff that are running this video today are all plugged into my battery banks. I like to use them, I like to get them out, I like to test them out, make sure that they're still working properly, see how much power drops by running some of these lights and stuff to give me a pretty good idea of what I can run in an emergency type situation. So, you know, they range anywhere from you can pick up a halfway decent one starting say around 200 bucks and you can go all the way up to over a thousand dollars it all depends on what your checkbook says you're allowed to do but in the end you want to make sure that you have power so we've covered your food water power to make sure that you can run certain things in the house and everything else so you're not sitting in the dark by a candle and you know sitting there twiddling your thumbs it's not a fun thing. And once you do go through something like that, trust me, you're gonna be checking into some of these things. Now, the last thing on this list that I would suggest that maybe you might wanna look into spending a little of your stimulus money on would be some way to cook. So if most houses do have electric stoves, it's the cheapest thing that they put in homes and everything else. And this way here, all you have to do is plug the stove in and they're done. They don't have to run the gas lines and everything else, hook you up to natural gas or propane or however they want to do it. You know, that all is in more expense when they're building homes and when you're remodeling and whatever else. If you're doing a remodel, I would suggest that you pay the extra money, have them run a gas line in it, especially if you're on natural gas or propane. I guess it doesn't really matter because this way here, if the power's out, you can still cook. That is a huge thing. But if you don't have any of those things, I would suggest you check into a Coleman stove. A Coleman stove would be one of the greatest additions to your arsenal as far as your survival preparedness products that you're going to want to make sure that you have because in the end, you can have all the food and water and everything else, but if you don't have a way to cook it, well, you're SOL. So let's not go down that road. You wanna make sure that 
You can buy the Coleman stove. They come, you can get them with the one pound little cylinders. But if you do buy the adapter, like I've shown in some of my videos, you buy the adapter, it'll hook to the 20 pound tank like goes on your barbecue grill. Isn't that just a wonderful thing, folks? You know, <clears throat> and at that point, you can cook for a very long time using that 20 pound tank. Trust me, I've used them for years on different types of trips that I've done, and I've run several different things off of that 20 pound thing, prep, uh, 20 pound tank, and I've never run out of fuel over a week or two. So it just goes to show you that's the way you really want to go. Even if you just buy a 20 pound tank, which you can pick up anywhere convenience stores, Lowe's, Home Depot. I mean, you can buy these tanks anywhere that you see the things outside when you pull in to get your gas and whatever else, 7 Eleven. They all got them. All right. So you can, they're out there for you. You just have to go and purchase. So this has just been some of the things that I would suggest that you may want to look into using some of your stimulus money. Now, like I said, a small portion of your stimulus money. Now, unfortunately, there's going to be people out there where they are not going to have basically anything left once they catch up on all their bills, depending on if they've been out of work since this whole pandemic hit over a year ago. And they started shutting everything down, everybody was out of work, and everything else. So you want to make sure that if that is the case, maybe take just a little bit of the money just to get the food part. The food part is the, the highest thing that you want to make sure. You have to have food to eat in an emergency situation. You can get around with the water. You can buy jugs of water and refuel them, clean out your um, milk jugs, anything else. You can fill those things up before any type of a natural disaster, hurricane, ice storm. You know when these, some of these things are coming and you can plan ahead for that. At that point, you fill up anything you have with water. So, I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I hope that you all enjoyed this video today. I hope it helped you out to give you an idea of what you may want to look into with some suggestions on what you could spend a little bit of your stimulus money on instead of blowing it on all those things that are out there that you probably just don't need. So until next time, I am Survival Preparedness for Beginners, like I just said, and I hope everybody stays safe, you keep prepping, and until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.